I painted Taylor Swift songs on stones. Can you guess all of them? Let's go. It's me. Hi. Okay, it's not currently the weather for finding stones here, but I got these last summer. I started by washing the stones clean with water and a sponge and let them dry off before painting. You could try chalk for sketching on dark stones, but I thought I'd test a white colored pencil first. This one was in the packet with the erasable colored pencils, but turns out it's actually a watercolor pencil. It worked surprisingly well. To make sure the white lines I painted would show up better, I used white gesso instead of white acrylic paint. But just opaque acrylic paint should work too. You might be wondering what I'm painting on this rock, and I'm actually drawing stars around its scars, and now they're bleeding. Oops. Let's do a bit of yellow and some extra stars. I probably wouldn't say this was my favorite, but let's move on. Since the watercolor pencil worked for sketching, I kept using it. This tone was a bit more smooth, which definitely makes it easier to draw and paint on. The stones I got from the lake were not great, but the ones I found on the ground were much smoother. Not sure how they got there. The best places to find smooth rocks would be rivers, since the current makes them rub against each other and round out. I wanted the color of the stone to show as the background, so I gessoed only the parts I was going to paint on. I did two layers for better coverage to make the colors blue. I wanted to use pink and one of my metallic paints for the beads, cause yes, it's a friendship bracelet. The numbers and letters were difficult to paint with this size brush, but my smaller brushes haven't kept their shape that well, so this might be my brush with the actual smallest tip currently. I messed up the M a little and had to go back and forth between the white gesso and black paint to fix it. For the next one, I also kept the stone color as the background. I sketched out an oval and then took out the silver paint marker for depicting the reflective part. I did a white rim and a decorative border with white gesso. I thought it needed some contrast and definition, so I added a black edge between the mirror and the border and did some lines to show its reflective surface and painted gold metallic paint over the border to make it an antique looking mirror. Since it's more of a decorative piece, cause we'd rather stare directly at the sun than actually look in the mirror. And I added some gold sparkles to make the background bejeweled. Again, I laid the groundwork with gesso twice and I used the black colored pencil for sketching. Then I painted over it with black paint. I figured the black would not show up from the dark stone, so I wanted a more contrasting background color for this design of a domino that could be one of many to cascade in a line. I think there's something off with the combination of the number of spots on this one though. This next one is a mistake. I tried doing a black design on a dark stone without painting the background. I just went straight in with the white colored pencil and chiseled only the one little part and then painted black around it. I only used gesso for the middle light to make it look brighter than the two others. I took the long way home that day and asked the traffic lights if it will be alright and they said I don't know. So after painting the yellow light on and the red and green off, I decided to give it a white border to not have it blend into the dark stone too much and a little bit of brighter paint for the red and green lights to make them look like they're still flickering here. For this next one, I started by painting a black sky, no gesso for the background, and once it dried, I mixed these green and turquoise paints with the white gesso to lighten them up a bit, but still make them opaque. I drew narrow lines with the round brush and then started brushing upwards from the lines with a flat brush that's more dry, so it kind of blends into the black sky, kind of like what you might see on a screen when you search Aurora Borealis green. And then I added stars by the pocketful and a lighter rim 
for the northern lights. I only had small stones left at this point, so the rest of these are just getting harder and harder. Well, I had bigger rough stones, but I didn't want to use them. I thought this one might work with the stone color as the background, but spoiler alert, it didn't. So I started with the white colored pencil sketch and painted the wings with orange. I painted the pattern with black and white, and since this was such a small painting and my brush was too big, I had to go back and forth between them to to make it look clean. At the end I had to cover up any trace of the stone cause the butterfly just wouldn't show up otherwise. And you might wonder what's underneath it. Well, it's the butterfly turning to dust. Last summer I was gathering the stones for this painting not knowing what they'd mean. Some to throw away, I'm looking at the butterfly one. <laughs> and some to make a diamond ring. After the colored pencil sketch, I busted out the paint marker again for the diamond and did a layer of gesso for the ring. Mixed a gray for the inside and painted the ring with the gold metallic paint and added some sparkles around it. By this point, I really had no good smooth rocks left, so I used this one for the final disaster. I did not let the gesso dry, I just kept painting over it with yellow, orange, pink, red, brown, some black lines, turning them to dark red. All of it blended together and lifted off the previous wet paint. I was just so done by this point that I didn't want to wait for it to dry. And finally, I just decided that okay, this autumn leaf did not fall like a piece into place, no matter how hard I tried to picture it. The magic just isn't here no more. Did you guess all of them? There'll be a playlist below with the answers. Now you know how to paint on stones, but how about painting on leaves? What's this video next? See you there! Just go.